days I wake up and I think to myself, what in the hell did I get myself into? I, 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 I don't belong here. I barely remembered to wear pants this morning. I mean, that, that, I, 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 that's a, then I find that, then I find out that I, like, I'm not the only one in that boat and I don't feel so bad. But I don't know if that's like a misery loves company thing or is that like, you know, or, 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 or is it like, you know, hey. It's relatable. Yeah. It's relatable. Like everybody, I think, struggles with feeling like they're in a room full of professionals and they're the only one who's like ever been weird or like doesn't wear pants or whatever. And it's like, no, no, we've all been there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it's actually it, it's weird now because i've been doing this long enough that people come to me for advice and shit and i'm like why are you coming to me right <laughs> like, it's like why yep totally i, don't have it together. I, mean, I'm I know and you have so much more experience like i had that moment actually a couple weeks ago when somebody was like oh me and my friend have been like kicking around this idea of like starting our own podcast and like what do you think and i was like what do you mean what do i think and they're like well you have a podcast like how long have you been doing that and i'm like i haven't been doing that i'm like oh wait i've been doing it for a year which isn't even that long but it like took me a minute because i was like oh my god we've been doing this for over a year like what the hell when you it, like some people don't look back like, you take a second sometimes to look back at everything you've yeah. done Holy shit! Is what happens, right? What the yeah. hell? How did I do all that? And then I you know. know. And, and because in the moment, like, like, uh, so I, uh, I don't know if you've been. Oh, you, you definitely. I know you've gotten a couple of days where I've done like these motivation. I appreciate you things going around. Going around. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things I real I recognize, especially. This is the closest thing we're going to talk about with COVID. Not even going to talk about the disease. Just the men do. <laughs> I let a you people, like give lot, me lot, the lot. heads up. You go, don't talk about this, and then you bring it up. Well, you're like, no, okay, I'm, I'm going to so bring it. Yeah, I know, I know. This I'm teasing where, you. This teasing. is where I'm going, right? This is where I'm going with this. <laughs> We've been very hard on on each other in the last year. Yeah, really, really hard. And I realized that you know one of the easiest ways to take a step and look back on what you did. And then, so what I've been quietly doing, not so quietly doing is I've been going to people and saying them, I appreciate you messages. Because yeah. in a time when you don't really know what's next, um, it's sometimes it's hard to forget, hey, you're still a very impressive, it doesn't feel like you can do very much right now. Yeah. You have done an awful lot. Yeah. Right. And that, and that's been like, and, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I don't know if I can change the world per se, but I can be kind to people. And I figured that was probably the best way to be kind to people. I think it has like an outward ripple effect because like, there's so much like, and again, I, I'm going to like skirt the subject, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot of like isolation that we're seeing, especially like because all of our connections or the majority of our connections have moved online. And it's, I think it's really affirming to have that direct contact still, because sometimes when you're on social media a lot, it feels like a bunch of people kind of just like shouting into the void. And like, you're touching on something I think that's really resonant with people. I even saw like, I don't know if you know um, who Amber Ruffin is. She was a writer for the Seth Meyers show and now she has her own late night show, but she know. did. Yeah, she's a comedian. She's really, really funny. And she has her late night show. And she actually did a monologue about like people coming out now that the world is opening up again and like feeling like they haven't accomplished anything and really struggling with that feeling of being like, oh, I had all this time to myself. Like, what did I do or whatever? And so for you to like reaffirm to people, like look at what you have done or even just encourage them to take stock of what they've done. Like, I do think that that has a positive impact, even if it's small, even if it's limited. Well, you don't have to make a big impact, like a ripple yeah. can, can, change an ocean, can change an ocean, right? And uh, yeah, um, I only bring this up is because I, I spent, like today is like my motivation for today is, is based, and I've been quietly, and this has been like a, a not quite an appreciation of emotion some people. We're all trying to get quote unquote better. I like to think that as a general rule of thumb, yeah. you and I are trying to be better people tomorrow than we were today. Right. Some days we don't <laughs> succeed. And I I, 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 I fairly admit, like I, I've said this on many times on my own show, I'm a fuck up. I'm I, not, not like, like, like I, I'll screw up all the time and honest and honest and true, honest and for true. Uh, it's a big part of, uh, it's a big part of what I, what I do, what I see, what I, like I fall now, I can beat myself up for falling, 
then I remember too, like I'm probably my harshest critic. Yeah. On the outside looking in, no one's gonna look at me and say, uh, like I mean, talk about like reverse roles. I'm in Windsor right now. You're <laughs> That is still like the weirdest thing to me that you are where I grew up and I am in Edmonton. Well, well, right well. My family's here too, right? I'm literally in my grandmother's yeah. house. So right, right this minute, I mean, if you want to look at this from a financial thing, I completely went off the wrong course. But, uh, from, from, um, from a family thing, a learning thing, from a doing thing, I've grown a lot in the last year. Yeah. Now it's now like, I know what's next for me. Like I've done this podcast. Like I really like this format. You know what I would really like to do, and I'm going to do this regardless of where, how how crazy the world gets in the next like six months. Uh, right? Is I'm going to start. I'm, I'm going to get myself like a, a crummy old mystery machine. I'm going to go across the country. I'm going to go. <laughs> yes. Hey, Renee, how you doing? <laughs> you doing anything today? Maybe. Maybe yeah. not. And, and, and I'm like, can I can I head up to your neck of the woods and can we have a conversation? I don't know about Jello. I don't give a rat's ass. You want to just talk about Jello for an hour? <laughs> and we'll, we'll film it too, and we'll just put it on like like Twitch and YouTube, and you'd be like, yeah. okay, that's, you, this seems weird, but I'm in. This Wait. seems very Josh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I I I realize that I, I, I'm not saying like I'm as funny or I have to quite the same outlook he does. But I, I really see the appeal of Dave Chappelle just going across the country and just doing what he damn well pleases and not really just yep. worry about it. I was too short. Yeah, and that's kind of like the next step for me. Like, like we we were, we were talking partly. Like, I got myself a day job again for the short term. But the, the honest reason why I got the day job again, so I can pay my illustrators, my editors, and stuff. Because I'm releasing more books this year. Awesome. I want them. Pay, I want them paid. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, important. I, I, yeah, I. I, I care i mean i i really really do care i want to do more freelance stuff too and i am doing more freelance stuff yeah. now that i know what i'm doing but yeah no like seriously i in my head i'm done i, I just i i just want to do my own thing live my own life and and, and, and and do some crazy adventuring for a little while and kind of like this might be my quote unquote midlife crisis. No, it's not. I just, I just don't give a fuck anymore. And just, yeah. just I anymore. I feel like this is, is ageless. Like the time is now for having this revelation. Like I'm going through it right now too. Like I just uh, got laid off pretty much. And now I'm coming up on this period where I like actually don't have to go back to work right away. And this is the first time I won't have worked a full time or part time job since I was 18 i want to say and i'm turning 33 this month so i'm like what do i do like i could actually take time and like work on my writing seriously and really work to leverage some of the connections i've made in the two years that i've talked to you <laughs> so yeah i yeah. think uh now's the time also i can't believe that you haven't actually bought a mystery machine up till now and because taken it I, cross this country sound, this does sound really 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 like ironic i've traveled as much as i travel i've never owned a car I've never needed one up until what? now oh no, wow because, because okay seriously from like from a point of view just just this is my point of view i lived in detroit phoenix calgary okay toronto Lots of little towns in between. Yeah. Like, right. Why would a car appeal to me? Because honest to God. Yeah. If you don't I, need it. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, because you, you, I still like. The one thing I've learned in this life is the absolute truth. Nothing can stop you. Nothing. Yeah. Right. If you really want it, there. I don't care what your wonderful limitations are. The universe will find a way for those things to happen. Yeah. Right. Right. And that, that's that's how it works. You want. OK, I want to take my show on the road, see if I get no use, leverage my connections to go. Hey, listen, I think I can talk to some amazing people across both countries. I'm a dual citizen. I can get away with yeah. it. Right. I, I got I, I need I need like crummy camera and audio equipment so I can actually <laughs> I can function in a van. And I need like food once in a while because I do need to eat. Yeah, burn hot water is also nice. Just saying, and uh, <laughs> you need to get yourself one of those over-the-shoulder like VHS camcorders that my dad was slinging like back in the nineties. Yeah. 
I, I, you want to actually wear that the idea legit that came from from me on this one. My uncle used to be a photographer, and he went literally across the world with his wife and could told stories. Yeah. And now that I'm like older, like honestly, it's a great way to make a living. It yeah. really, really is because honestly, you see the world, you meet some amazing people. Like, like people are always fascinating. And like when you're talking off the air, you're you're figuring this out more and more as you go. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with like about 50 interviews under my belt now. It's wild. It's uh, so I, <laughs> I actually this is really funny to me because I was talking to my co host. So I have a podcast now it's called Listen to Me podcast, like the number two. And I co host it with my childhood friend who also grew up in Windsor, Gio Petrucci. And we have interviewed a bunch of just creatives like across the board, like we talked to everybody, we talked to visual artists, graphic designers, writers, um, like mixed media artists. We've talked to like entrepreneurs, like all of this stuff. And part of what's like so amazing having these conversations is just hearing about like what lights people up and like seeing the impact that that has on like me and on Geo and like anybody who's listening because you do get a spark out of it. Like you're like, oh yeah, it reminds you like why you love doing the shit that you love to do and why you like connecting with people so much like in your creative field or even outside of it. So it's been really great. But I was talking to Gio before I came on to talk to you, Josh, and um, just like explaining to him what this was. And I go, yeah, you remember Josh, like he's from Windsor. And I met him at the When Words Collide conference in 2019, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and I heckled him at his seminar on how to start a podcast. And he asked me to be on his podcast. And Gio was like, oh, he's like, are you going to heckle him today? And I'm like, maybe. I don't know. It's possible. You know me well enough to heckle me. I mean, <laughs> it's I, that I, Windsor connection. It's that immediate in that I have. Well, the, the thing, uh, so here's what I, miss, I remember about Windsor and I really, really appreciate. It's still a very friendly place. Like for oh, yeah. all it's, for all it's, um, bizarreness to it it's like, rough edges uh the rough edges see i i, I lived in detroit I, and the rough edges is is, is yeah that's fine i i think the weirdest thing for me coming back here is because i lived in calgary and i lived in vancouver i come back and i'm like what like like why do i need a car in this city like why i shouldn't need a yeah. car in the city it's it's not big enough to justify a car. I know, but, but does the transit still suck? No, 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 like, that's the thing, right? The transit <laughs> shit here, right, right? right? And, and but that's because it's the motor city. Well, Detroit's the motor city, but yeah. Windsor used to be the automotive capital of Canada. So everybody and their dad was working for freaking GM right. or Chrysler. Yeah, yeah, and they had a car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but, but now now you're like, now you're looking at, because it's not that way anymore. Like, you know, you, I, if you were to hear any, if you've been here any time in the last ten years, you're like, you're not, you're, you're trying to still be the automotive city. You're not. I know, no, you're, not for many not. years. Yeah, and, and so why are you still trying to pretend? You're never going to be this again. You should just no. like embrace what you are, which is yeah. you're a small town with a good soul. That's yeah. Really well, there. Yeah. Like Gio right. lives in Windsor now and we've actually talked to like a ton of people who are still there and who are trying to like really revitalize. Cause I know there's been a huge revitalization of the art scene in Detroit and there are people in Windsor who are trying to do oh, that very, as well. Very much so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was really sad because I mean, I mean, there's only two bookstores here left now because of everything that's happened. One yeah. of them is Jennifer, which is, I still like it's, is Juniper still open? When when it's allowed to be. Oh, okay, good. Oh, I thought you were gonna tell me it like closed permanently. Just, just, just remember, I can't buy underwear till Friday. Just, oh just let you know. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but we're not talking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, but Juniper and um, Bibi Oasis are still yeah. open and. They're both great bookstores. Like honestly, yeah. I I I have a soft spot for Juniper because I've it's been a cool there. Place. Like, it's no, it's so like, it's, cool. Yeah. So now it's now both of those are my third and second favorite places in the area. Okay. Yeah, number one. Number one. This is number one. I can't get. I I could go, but that would be like very consequential in terms of my mobility right now, and that would be, you know, John King Books in Detroit, right? No, I don't. You I've don't? never been. No. Oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> so the next time I'm there. No, 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 no. So it, when we can go states, it's in the states. Yeah. It's in the states. Okay. You take the tunnel. 
it, you take, um, you, you walk to Lafayette, you get to, it's basically off the La, Lafayette Lodge Freeway. There's like a warehouse. Oh my there God. There are millions of books in there. I am not. How do I apply to live there? You can talk to John. John's a nice guy. I just, <laughs> like, like, I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. When I was uh, like back in my more flaky days, when I actually was living, when I lived in Windsor the first time, right? The first time I was at St. Clair College here. I, I wasn't ready for college at the time. I honestly, it was just one of those things like I didn't belong there and I really, really didn't. And it took yeah. me probably, it just didn't. I, it, it is what it is. And, um, but my, but when I was there and taking journal, the journalism course, he was my first interview, actually. John King. I went, actually went there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a little, a little history for everybody. Like, um, yeah. So I actually got to go into the basement where all the books he hadn't. That's just as many books as is on any of his one floors. It was incredibly <laughs> frightening to actually just look at that. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Jennifer is my the second favorite because of the house is so cool. Like it yes. is one of the qu it, like, yeah. like um, it's like in a book. Like it's something you would read about in a book. Like it's yeah, this used bookstore that's like just. It's like four stories or three stories. It's three. It's three stories. Before. Yeah. So what makes it so cool is the atmosphere. So if yeah. you're watching, listening, like like you watch, it's an old house. Yes. It's very still put together. Um, yep. It's well taken care of. Like the people that own it really, really love what they do. And yep. each room is like a magic room filled with books that with your name on there. You bring a light wallet because your money will just, you can literally feel your money burning in the wallet. It's like, like no! it, it's just getting up and walking away. Like it's, for, yeah, Actually, it's, it's so it's cool. It's just stuff on fire because it knows it's going to disappear from your wallet very soon. <laughs> I'm done. Take my money. <laughs> And then, and, and then, and then lastly, lastly, uh, Billy Oasis, which is kind of, a, it does have a used section. And I got, actually, I'll show you what I got from Billy Oasis because I, I get the, so I got a research guide for me. This is the annotated Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Oh my God. So, cool thing about this book is, yeah, it has the story in there. But what I really yeah. like about it, what I really like about it, for example, if you look on there, you see those little, those little like note, notes yep. there. Yeah, the annotation. They're, they're yeah. from the Lewis Carroll Society. You talk about all the commentaries about. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So, is so, it like a mix of illustrations? Because I know that yeah, Arthur yeah, Wackham yeah, yeah, did yeah. illustrations for Alice in Wonderland too. Yeah, yeah I know. There, there, there's illustrations on the inside too. I actually like. I don't know if you've watched me draw on my show at all. I actually no. draw on the show. <laughs> I actually draw now. <laughs> which is what yeah no going to now it was totally nice to find like it's my research it's what it's my alice research yeah my alice research in my alice in wonderland greek mythology mashup cool oh yeah. that's awesome yeah alice is pandora in my story and it worked uh, yeah okay that that yeah. tracks yeah and yeah like on the 15th well i i mean i think people know is i have a sequel to the first book i did um i i i was i was requested to write a lewis carroll story Okay. Like, I'll say about Lewis Carroll that's not been said. And then I met. A, then I go to a bar and I meet a girl with a Gorgon tattoo on her shoulder. And then suddenly the idea for the story like literally, literally came to my head right, pretty much from that. Nice. And, and uh, no, it's been fun to write. But like that's the thing. Like there's like Windsor still has some very cool spots to it. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to really explore it like yeah. I normally would. Because yes. it's just been yeah. a weird ass fucking time. Yep. yep. But it, but um, I'm hoping. I get the feeling we're going. We're, we are getting past the lockdown phase of yeah. this insanity. Um, so hopefully when we hopefully when I can buy underwear again, I can actually start exploring <laughs> the city exactly the way I like. I want to. I want to yeah. explore it because there are. There are some very talented people here. Yeah. I, I, I like. Um, I've been trying to get Chrissy Cochran to come on the show. Like she's a singer based out of here. Okay. Guys, again, just there, there is some really cool talent here that I feel yeah. it's understated. But I think that's typical of Canada. We understate our talent. So. Yeah, that's true. And in some places, I feel like it can be harder to find like your people or like those people. And it's 
with now, and I mean, like, again, we're not talking about it, but like during the pandemic, it's hard to make those connections if you haven't already gone out. Like, I feel really lucky in a way that like I spent, you know, like most of 2018 just trying to explore the writing community in Alberta and like make some connections or stronger sort of links with people in the writing community, because that's kind of what kept me going. Like during the pandemic and being disconnected from everyone and not being able to see people in person like it's been really like just i'm like thank god like thank fuck that i did this because otherwise yeah, yeah. i'd just be like losing my mind i, I, I got a comment to answer dory i'm so sorry i've talked to my underwear a lot in the last little bit but it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's because when you happen to run out like or no run to point where you need some and they shut everything down and socks was the worst I like you gotta like, order them online. No, like, I tried. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. I was like, what the hell's going on here? So it was like <laughs> Oh my god. No, I I, I I it's not that I'm in that I've ordered other things online. They've come no problem, but for whatever reason it's just like nope, those things you really, really like, yeah. I'm sorry, Dory. I promise the joke ends Friday. I promise the joke ends Friday. <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, I I want to. I may have promised ironically to an ex girlfriend of mine, uh, maybe okay. at Calgary, that I would explore the city. Before, yeah. Like, before I do take off, I should explore because, and I do sense this. Like there are good things here. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't feel so bad. I don't feel so bad because it looks like it looks like I'm not the only one that had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> There was no. like a nationwide underwear shortage at some point, I'm sure. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that makes well, sense I mean, me. it is what it is. But so you've interviewed, not, you, I don't understand why I've done like like almost 600 of these now. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cool, right? So, yep. Yep. What have you learned? Man, I um, I have learned that everybody's path toward like success or whatever success looks like for them is very specific to them and also very similar. So one thing that the interviews have definitely disabused me of was this like belief that there's like a one size fits all path to like doing anything creative or getting any kind of like success with your art or even like fulfillment with your art because it really is just like, you find yourself kind of going down these little like it's like when you're in the woods okay so imagine you're in the woods and you're walking down a clearly cut and marked trail okay life has this way of steering you onto these little like rabbit trails like these little tiny paths like to the side of the clear cut trail and then you kind of wander around for a little bit you get turned around and then you like turn back and you figure out like okay the the main path is over there so i got to get back there eventually but actually there's something interesting catching my eye this way so i might go and look at it and it's like that for everybody and that's part of the like intense frustration of life and also the joy of life is just like getting lost and allowing yourself to like accept that that's part of the process of like figuring out where you're going where you need to end up that's so can i add to that yeah of course so, so let me ask you this with everybody you've interviewed yeah when they have achieved a certain level of success have you ever stopped and looked at the person and their success and see i have see this like this has like been my revelation with everybody i've interviewed okay their road to success fits them perfectly yeah whether it's by accident or by plan or whatever the case may be however the, their origin story is you get to know that person you under and you listen to them how they speak how they talk what they believe and all that stuff yeah you realize that the, that the, the spaghetti that's stuck to the wall with them yep is not that different from the person you're talking with at all. yeah totally it's like they got what they needed when they needed it and kind of like talking back about that that piece of like frustration that i think a lot of creatives experience is that like th it's hard to trust that that's the case like that you are being given what you needed and that you're right where you need to be or whatever because a lot of us are like really 
we like like look around a lot we're always like oh what's happening over there like what's this person doing or whatever and we get impatient and we're like well i want something more like that and we don't trust that the stuff that we're getting is like the right stuff you know well i i so all my successes have literally been by accident like i've discovered like the, <laughs> it sounds it sounds strange but I, I consider my true gift is being recognized the, the chocolate chips in my cookie dough. Like that's literally like my, that is my gift to myself. Yeah. Recognizing the good things in your life when they present themselves to you and just treasuring them for what they are. That's yeah. actually, I think that, that is a skill. I didn't plan to start a podcast. I didn't plan to write that epic poetry that traditionally got published and both completely by accident. It just was, I went with it because it was just it was there and it was ready right place all that stuff right yeah but i look at I, I look at my own my own path and it's like yeah it's not like anything it was nothing i ever would have recognized right yet, yeah, exactly. yeah yeah right nothing, yes. nothing. yeah exactly and yet, that. and yet i don't think i could have done it any other way which is the other yeah. part of that, that makes you go huh well, because it's like you think, I think that we really do believe this. And I feel like it's partly like, it's part of, it's partly a product of growing up like in the culture that we do, where there's these narratives and myth around sort of like self-actualization and self-determination. And you get to determine like what your path is. And I think those things like lull us into a false sense of like, yeah, I'm going to like be the captain of my own ship and I'm going to decide like where I go to. And you don't really allow for like how many ways life will and will continually to that end just test you and mess you up and trip you up and then like it you look at it six months later and you go oh right like oh look at what i took away from that like oh if i had been the captain of my own ship and i had steered around like that sandbar and not gotten marooned and figured out how to like build my own smoke signal as i'm like extending this metaphor way past it's like lifeline sure. there you know what i mean like you realize that 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 was meant to happen and you look at you learn to like recognize what you're carrying forward into this stuff that is meaningful to you right but it's not always like in the moment which is well, no, <laughs> so no, frustrating sometimes, sometimes you're like the worst moments of my life i'm thankful they happen now they made me a lot stronger yeah. than i needed to be now also it taught me how to be an asshole in all the right ways. That's another, <laughs> it sounds funny, but the thing is, I mean, to, to truly, to truly be able to get anything from this world. And it's just, it's just yeah. like there is, there is a little, you do have to be a little ruthless sometimes. Yeah. Right. And, and you have like, I can be the nicest, most lovable guy, but I can also, I've also learned that I can be an asshole too. I know it's hard to believe, you know, my big <laughs> head, all that stuff, you know, that, you know but you, you have to, you have to learn yeah. at some point, like you have to learn at some point to have that ruthlessness. And if I hadn't gone through what I went through when I was younger, I never would have had it. I don't know if I would have been like, I would have been too meek for some of the opportunities that come my way. Yes. So, yeah. And, and yeah. I, think, and that's like, so I'm thankful for those bad things for that reason, because yeah. For me, right? I I was like, okay, I need like to truly see success, to truly to truly need the, um, you know, it, to, to truly to truly uh, be ready for. Sometimes you have to go through those hard bumps. It's like yeah. okay, because later on, bigger things are coming your way. Yes. This is, train, this is your training grounds now. Yes. The right? stakes are low, but to you, they've never been higher because this is the first time that you're going through it, right? So it feels like the most of anyone ever. It's just yeah. like when you're a kid and every time, well, I mean, it still applies, but like when you're a kid, every year you turn older, that's the oldest you've ever been. So it feels like the oldest anyone's ever been. You're just like, oh my God, I'm 12. I know everything because you've lived 12 years of your life and that's all you've lived so far. And you're like, sure that there can't be anything else, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> but there's always stuff on the other side and the stuff that we go through that's difficult is the stuff that teaches us and mm -hmm. is the stuff that, yeah, it's right. You're like, it's literally like in video game, it's like 
beating every boss level until you get to the end, you would not be able to beat the final boss if you had not trained with the level bosses. Absolutely, no, er everything leads somewhere. Uh, we're gonna go a couple of things. I go into you now, I call them grenades. You may throw it, attention to blowing up and never blows up right away. No, it, 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 yeah. it, does. it does. Like everything takes its own time in its own place because also like, I look at the, I, I'm actually like, I'm very thankful I've never won the lottery. Yeah, I don't know what that would be worse. Like, yeah, I would like the money. Who wouldn't like the money right now? <laughs> right. right? But, yep. but I'm not mature enough. To, and I know this even right now. I'm still not mature enough to handle that yet. That's yeah. why I don't got it. Right. You can handle what you got. It's like, I got nothing. I'm yeah. not mature. Right. Yeah. right? I'm yeah. immature. That's what I did. But I mean, but it's a good, it's a good open, honest, like assessment of where I'm at, where I'm going. And the thing is, because you don't, we can all like accidentally find success. It, it can happen. I'm not saying it's, yes. it's a guaranteed thing, but we yeah. can find it. Yeah. Keeping it's another story. That is actual work. And I'm not just talking like the craft of what you do. The attitude of you is going to make you or break you yeah we get there yeah absolutely yeah i that's so interesting that you talk about that because i literally just finished watching the dolly parton documentary on netflix mm -hmm. and that is like such a thing that's part of her story like she when she came to nashville because she was from like a tiny little town like up in the misty mountains of like tennessee or whatever like very very rural country girl she was 18 years old and the some of the people that they interviewed who were at the recording studio where she initially started recording and writing were talking about how they just couldn't get over how talented she was but how like nobody wanted to work with her and it's almost like that was how it was supposed to be in her life because by the time she reached like the transcendental level of fame that dolly parton has like where she has like household name recognition she had already gone through so much stuff that she knew exactly how she wanted to handle her money her fame and her career right and it enabled her to like create kind of what you're talking about josh that idea of like longevity where she was still getting to do the things that were important to her, like making music, recording songs and writing, because she's a prolific songwriter, but also like keeping her, the business of Dolly Parton alive in a way that was sustainable without burning herself out, like a one hit wonder, you know what I mean? Or somebody who's yeah. around for and, like a couple of years. And by the way, there's no shame in being a one hit wonder. I, I, no, make that yeah. very clear. No, that's, I wanna make that totally clear. Like, like it's sometimes it's just, you gotta be very real about I've interviewed a lot of people that have been bestsellers or I've interviewed like three famous people. And one of the things, like the other thing, I don't know, I don't know who your biggest name is, but yeah, you interview enough of them. Yeah. Right. You will find that they almost all of them have an identical attitude about how they approach going to work. And they almost, almost all of them. Like I, I was, I was really amazed. Like when I interviewed Jonas Sell, and then I interviewed Fonda Lee, and then I interviewed Spider Robinson, and then I interviewed like, and I'm like, okay, their personal stories are all different. Yeah. Their attitudes are almost identical when it comes to putting in the work. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, that's a thing. Yeah. So, and, and, and so like, I don't know, I like, it, it, this is a conscious thing. I don't know who your biggest guest has been right yet i i'm sure you've had some uh, that have been really like who they're probably some surprised you some that have just gotten started which is always like, also great for yeah we're reasons. all over the map like yeah, we have I, some I, people I, whose careers are just starting out and some people like uh next week we're talking to lisa murphy lamb who's like really big in the calgary community like she um she's an acquisitions editor at stonehouse publishing like she started loft 112 which is like a cooperative like workspace for writers like yeah yeah you know what i mean she's like she's who i want to be when i grow up basically <laughs> like <laughs> one story i i before i left calgary i was considering doing a 24-hour podcast for charity that oh, might yeah. be how I, no I, and actually i wanted to use loft 112 to do it that was oh, actually yeah, you, you know, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Loft 112 is such a cool thing 
Yeah. Uh, first time I rode in there though, they had like a like male nudity up there, so you never looked up. It's like, oh my god, no. <laughs> oh, that I sounds fun for me, head. not for you. No, 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 I, no, I'd be okay not, with that. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Now I'm, yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't like what it was, but it's just like you look up, it's like like when you want to take a break from your words, I look up, okay, and it breaks over. Back to work. Well, <laughs> oh, it's a good motivation for you then, is <laughs> to yeah, yeah, keep your eye on the prize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first time, but no, it, it's always cool to go in there because it's such a different, every time you go, it's different. I've taken classes there too, and, and yeah. it, it's a really cool. It's yeah. A cool space. It's, it's a cool space. And uh, actually, you just gave me a really good idea. I might talk to you off, but give me five minutes when we get off the air. I have an idea. So, right, right, right. <laughs> so, but, um, but like, like it's, it's such a cool journey when you meet and talk to people because er, their stories, it's also funny where you can see it you see yourself a little bit in everybody too, right? You yeah. see me in some cases who you could be. Some cases, like, I remember when I was like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. And that's what's so great about talking to people who are kind of like all along the spectrum of like success or like progress in their careers, like however you want to term it, because it really is like, you know, even thinking about the conversations I was having with you two years ago, like I remember you kind of like gassing me up a little bit and being like, hey, like you're gonna do great things and you're gonna like publish. And I had not published anything at that point. And I was like, man, this is really nice, but like, I don't know, I just don't see it happening. You know what I mean? And so even coming back to talk to you like two years later, I'm like, whoa, I really have done some shit. Like, oh my God. So yeah, when you talk to people who are kind of like in the beginning stages, it makes you take stock of like where you are now. But then when you, I think what's changed for me is that talking to people who are further down the line in their careers, instead of feeling like hopelessness and being like, I'll never get there. I actually feel like galvanized. Like I'm like, yeah, like this is so cool. And like, if I want to do something like this, I can do it. There's also going to come a point in that where you're going to feel you're on their level too, on some way, <laughs> some way. And I don't don't tell like, me the future again, Josh. I'm not ready for it yet. How <laughs> <laughs> dare you? You were right last time. I don't want to hear it again. Stop. Yeah. Oh. So you're not planning on stopping anytime soon, right? Uh, stopping what? Like writing or the you're, you're podcast? Or... You're going to keep it going for... I think we're, yeah, we're going to keep it going for a little while. Like we've been having some success with it and it's it, honestly, it's just really enjoyable. It's like what we're getting out of it is still enough to, to sustain mm -hmm. it. Absolutely. So then yeah. I'm going to let you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read your future a little bit. Okay? Are you ready? ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm bit. so ready. I'm ready. You, you keep doing this. It's going to motivate you to do more great things. Cause it's yeah. what it does. And then somewhere along the way, you're gonna you're gonna have a confidence in how you approach them. It's gonna feel a lot more natural. You're not gonna be like, oh my god, it's so and so. <laughs> you're still gonna fan out. Don't get me wrong. Like we're yeah, all yeah, yeah. fans, but it won't feel the same. You're not gonna be like, oh, they're so far. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna think that way at all anymore. You 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 will you will come to the point where you'll be able to treat everybody like a human being. And when you get to that point, right? Well, then you get rid of the biggest hurdle of actually your your own success. You will never feel like you're an imposter. Yeah. At the moment anymore. You will just feel like this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Yeah. To do something good. Now you're still like you may not get all the little things right because Lord knows I still don't get all the little things. Yeah, right, no, right? Yeah. But, we don't hope for that. We just yeah. hope. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. For it to be good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but 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 what what does tend to happen? What does tend to go go is you go at this long enough, hard enough, often enough, you're gonna recognize that I you're gonna very subconsciously accept the fact that you know what I belong here. Yeah. And you're gonna be like, and that's gonna be the best thing. Like when you have that in you, because it's not. Going to completely defeat Mr. Imposter. It that like you have to do some. There's there's another trick to Mr. Imposter, and if you want to talk about that, we can. But it's a big one because if you can do that, if you can look across, it, who's your dream interview? Who's still your dream interview? Oh man, I would probably die if I got. I have like two maybe. If I got okay. N.K. Jemison, I would I'm die. She's an incredible sci-fi 
and fantasy. I'm trying to get her myself. She's on my list as well. Oh my God. Hook me up if it happens. And like, obviously the perennial favorite is Neil Gaiman. I think I have a better shot at getting Gaiman than Jensen. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I know. I know people who know Gaiman at least, right? I don't. Really? I don't know. Yes. Yes. I, I have a shot. I'm not going to say I have a great shot because Neil might just say, "Fuck you." No, I'm not going to do your stupid stuff. And that's, that's totally his business. Right? You can totally do that. Well, he's that's Neil Gaiman. You can do what he wants. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's Neil Gaiman. You can say whatever the hell he wants. But, yeah, um, exactly. Right, but um, but. But the, what, what I'm saying is, right, is there is a, so for me, I got like, now I, I'm just chasing anything and everything. Like I like in this last year, I was telling so many people I've tried to get on my show, Alice Cooper, because I think that'd be fucking cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Brandon Sanderson. I want to play Magic the Gathering on the air with Brandon. Sanderson. Oh my God. Brandon Sanderson would be so cool. I, I tell me if you I, get I, him. I'm, I'm literally friends with one of his betas. Oh my god! So, yeah, so um, I'm one of the. So it, it's not again. Again, it's you. You are literally like that. That whole expression. You literally five people away from everybody. It's yeah. True. It is. Yeah. Six degrees true. to Kevin Bacon. It's, it's, totally. Yeah, you're you're totally there, right? <laughs> but some, sometimes, and I, and this is gonna be, and maybe this is the one of the last crazy piece of advice, but like, and Kay Jemison's on my list too. I've been reading. Her comics, actually, I found her. She I, has I, comics. I didn't know. Well, you would know so, that because I don't really. Yeah, I'm a comics. comic nerd, right? Yeah. But she's also doing one of my like. I'm a big Green Lantern fan. She's so she's writing a Green Lantern book called Far Sector. Awesome. It's fantastic. It is so. Oh, good. I don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, but I like for a first time comic writer. It's like. Yeah. Wow. Well, like, if you okay, so if you want to like kind of diverge from the comics a little bit her anthology of short short stories like sci-fi and fantasy how long till black future month is so good and so i could see how she could apply that to comics well no i i, I actually no so I, I actually so the comics to tell me actually reading one of her books uh stones of I, stones of the earth no that's not the right title I, I have to go find it somewhere, but yeah, she's good. Like she's yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um. So she's like, she's on. Like I tried. Like I like said, Alice Cooper because fuck yeah, why not? Right. Um. <laughs> yeah. Brandon Sanderson, why not? Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh. Neil's actually not on my list, and I'll tell you why. So here's here's my thing. Yeah. I read the Alice Lint first. That is okay. Really, really, that, that's fair that is fair yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, because i read charles de lint because I, I think neil gaiman started writing that because of charles de lint like well, his style so, borrows actually, from him so so i'm a ray bradbury nerd like that's my Me too. That's my big jam yeah so you don't want to get ray bradbury i'm just kidding i know he's dead zombie ray bradbury i i, I so I was one day away from meeting Ray Bradbury. It kills me. No, oh, I'm so sorry. No, well, it kills me because I had uh. to. Go back. I, I had to go back. I, there was nothing I could do. It was San Diego Comic Con when Ray was still alive. Yeah. I would do San Diego Comic Con on Saturdays. I only had San Diego Thursday, Friday. It was. I. It was a great experience. Oh my god! Like literally a day away. That's yeah. Absurd. No, I no. It, like like um. So I grew up reading Asnoff, Bradbury. Yeah. Robert Jordan. All right. I don't think I've read Robert Jordan. Is that uh, the wheel? Wheel of Time. Something? Wheel of Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wheel, yeah. Of, time. yeah. wheel of Time. So I, 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 once upon a time, I wanted to be a tour superstar. That's that that that's not where I ended up. I ended up being like, well, I'll, I'll tell you some. I'll tell you off the air. Some like some of the cool stuff <laughs> happening with me. But um, <laughs> but it, it's one of those things where. Uh, where like like that opportunity to meet your hero, I, I just I couldn't make it work. I tried. I tried different things to make it work. I just I couldn't yeah. and uh I never got another chance. And it's too bad because it like it's Ray Bradbury, right? And so, it is really upsetting, but maybe it's like you were talking about it just wasn't your path. No, it wasn't it, well sometimes you just don't you well, maybe I could have found like looking back, yeah, knowing what I know now, maybe. Like I, yeah. I'm a lot, I'm a lot crazier now than I used to be back then too. <laughs> and then, and the like, I just, I just don't stop. Like I just, yeah. I, at this point, just like, I'm, this is, I'm going to do this or it'll kill me and I'm good either way. And not everybody has that. <laughs> I do. 
I, I, but honestly, that's like a thing that you were talking earlier about like people who succeeded, like their work ethic. And a lot of people have that. I think like a lot of people who are successful have this sort of like, I don't know what you want to call it, like an internal driver motor. That's just like, I will do this. I will do this. Nothing will stop me from doing this. This is the thing I am doing. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. really like back that imposter syndrome for sure. What, what, uh, uh, okay. So would you like more, do you, do you want more future advice? <laughs> yeah, of course. Because I, 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 again, now call me crazy. Just call me crazy. I get the feeling that somewhere down the road, we're going to be going for like the same award and you're going to win because you're going to be <laughs> goddamn good. So, so, so when and if you get there. Yeah. To this award. Whatever, Whatever like, it maybe, is. Maybe, maybe maybe an Aurora, maybe, maybe, maybe something else, because I get the feeling, yeah, I, I just know this. Like you, you're getting more confident. Keep applying your stuff. You can like I think a lot more doors are gonna open up for you. Just a personal hunch. I just feel that way about you. Thank so when you. you get so when you get when you get those doors, three questions. Yeah. How did you get here? Yep. What do you do so well that they notice you? Okay. And what could I do to fuck this up? <laughs> and don't do that. <laughs> Actually, uh, yes. <laughs> so when I when I got nominated for the Aurora for my podcast, I, I was like, literally, I had that bout of imposter syndrome. And what I did was, I go, okay, how did I get here? I have a big mouth. <laughs> what, do I do, what do I do incredibly well? I make people feel at ease on my show, and I talk to them. Yeah. How could I get in my own way? I'm not always organized. I sometimes my quality of the of the of the sound. That's actually something else I'm working on. Like one of the things I, I one of the last things I've had to unlearn is I have to take care and invest in myself more. Yeah. That's yeah. something like that's a personal weakness that I had yeah. to recognize for myself. And people we all we all have them, right? No worries, Doris. No worries. Right. Um we all have that. We all yeah. have to, we, none of us are perfect. We all have incredible strengths that make us amazing. And those weaknesses, although they are, they can cripple us if we let them, sometimes they add to that voice. We don't read a story because it's perfect. We read a story because yeah. I can only get Renee Malosh's, by the way, it's, it is Malay Malosh professionally, I should, I should ask. Like, no, yeah, it's yeah. Malosh, but yes, it is Renee Malosh. Yeah, yeah, Renee yeah, Malosh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I can't say a name, look at my hand. It's, yeah. nobody can say it. It's fine, especially here in Alberta. Almost nobody says it correctly ever. I give you a big, I have a big digital hug there, there. <laughs> Anyways, um, what I'm what I'm saying is though, right? Now your flaws sometimes give you are one of the reasons your voice is the way it is, and you shouldn't yeah. necessarily try to try to change that part of you if it is what makes you work. Yeah. When you see success, and you will run an honest gut check of what got you there. Yeah. And be very honest with yourself about your strengths and your weaknesses. And keep that in mind as you go forward. Because honest to God, right, the thing is getting success, we can all do that by accident. Yeah. You don't want success. You don't you don't want to progress. You want to keep growing and keep doing things the way yeah. you want to do them. Whatever that looks like for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think that's so um, relevant as well. Like what you're saying about don't discount something about yourself, like just because you don't like it, like sometimes even our flaws and especially when it comes to making art, like remember that art is subjective. Remember that the people who determine what art gets in front of people's eyeballs or in front of their ears those are gatekeepers, but they're not necessarily the supreme beings in the universe who are the arbiters of taste. Like, you know what I mean? Because the thing is that it's exactly what you said, Josh, every single person who applies themselves to a creative pursuit is bringing something that nobody else can to that. And that is their personal viewpoint. It's the collection of things that make them unique. And I think sometimes when you are chasing that commercial success, it's really easy to like fall into this trap of, well, how do I make myself less me and more like them? And part of the problem with that mentality is that if you find success by making yourself less me and more like them, 
in my opinion, it's way harder to sustain your practice because you're constantly pushing against like what you are naturally doing, what you have to give. So there's two ways of looking at that one. So that, that, that's one possible hell. Would you like to hear the other possible hell? Of course. You become exactly what you're not. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, it's like, terrifying. Yeah. 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 You, you become what you're not. And that's, and like we do this because I don't know about you. I, I don't want to, I don't want to work for a living anymore. I'm too old. <laughs> we are getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm too old. I want to create, I want to live a creative life. I want to be creative. I want to inspire people to do what they're going to do. I want people to believe in me enough to invest their money yeah. and time into me. That's what I want right now. Do I need a luxurious lifestyle? No, no. I'm at, like I said, if, if, if the truck, if the, if this traveling thing fails, I'm going to Hawaii. Right? <laughs> and you might laugh at me at that one, but here's the, here's the truth. It's all expensive everywhere now, right? So, yeah. you, so you might as well just go where you want to go and like and pay, yeah, pay yeah. to be there. Yeah, totally. So, so I, I I look at I look at it like that. So I uh, it's we're trying not to resent what we do. Yeah. Right? Like, like the, the, I think the worst trap was Arthur Conan Doyle and uh, Moria and, and Sherlock Holmes, right? He totally. Yeah. So he, he grew to hate Holmes. He couldn't get rid yeah. of him. Yep. 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 Absolutely. And I think that's the, like, I do hear people go down that road and I go down that road myself where I'm just like, you know, I could try to churn out like a commercial, like mass market paperback genre, like, and try to get on a bestseller list and blah, 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 whatever. Like, yeah, I could try, I could apply myself to that and I might succeed or I might fail. But ultimately if that's, if I do it and I hate it, and that's the thing that brings me success, it's exactly like what you're saying. It will grow to be something that I resent. And there's already so much working against us in our daily life. And the fact that we need to like work to live and we like live in this capitalist society and all of that, that I guess undermines the joy that we find in our creative process because it's always like, Oh, if you're going to make something and you're going to make something for money, better make it good. Like it has to adhere to industry standards. And that is nothing if not a joy killer. It will absolutely kill the joy of whatever it is that like, because if you think about it, why did you start drawing? Why did you start writing comics? Why did you start writing in the first place? Well, because it, it's joyful. It's an expression of something that's important to you. Right. But mm -hmm. if all your focus is on how do I turn this into something that makes money or garners me commercial success, you do, there's no way that you can avoid building up resentment. Yeah. As going out, it is total bullshit. Like, but yeah. now here's the thing. I will say this, this is the only, thing I will say in, in this, it never hurts to look at why something works. Never does. Yeah. There are things you can definitely use from that to help tell your story. But at the end of the day, you gotta tell the story only you can tell. Because after yeah. all, after all, that's what I'm here for, right? I, I'm yeah. I'm here I'm here I'm here to hear Mr. Miss Renee's version of a story on a beer can, because that's awesome. Right? <laughs> and, and and I bring this up because she got published on a beer can last year. Yes, yes, I did. It was very strange, but also really cool. Yeah. You said you have it? I do, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna grab it. That's right. By the way, this podcast does not necessarily support alcoholic beverages. It's not against alcoholic beverages either. It is just there. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. It's pretty, right? Like, look at yeah. the can. That's a very pretty can. Yeah. That's a very pretty can. So this, this is, is like. A, the, 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 did they art for your story, or is it the, or, or is it that just the can? Yeah, it's just part of the wrap for this, um, like the super stout, which was the um, the like batch or whatever you want to call it for Blind Man Brewing. So they have a partnership with CKUA Radio in Edmonton, and they run these this contest, which is um, I think the editor or the person who reviews them is Jason Norman, who works for the Writers Guild of Alberta also, and he publishes um, Fun Fun Funicular which is somewhere on my shelves, but I just don't know where, um, which is another really cool lit mag. Um, but anyway, so he was taking submissions and so I submitted to them and uh, yeah, and I got it. It's my first publication credit and I will keep this beer can forever. Perhaps I will have it bronzed and mounted to my wall. Probably should, seriously. 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm not kidding. Like, be proud of what you've accomplished. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, look, I, 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 I don't like. As I say, he's talking about my next Alice book. I'm actually so Alice is playing Jason Croquet in the Underworld. In my, <laughs> my next story. Nice. Because after all, what Croquet is very Alice in Wonderland. And, it is. Yep. And. And yeah, no, it is fucking cool, right? Like that, that like I, 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 I'm actually a little jealous to be honest with you because I've, I've never been, I never thought to get published on a beer can before. But it's like a pretty cool thing. Yeah, sometimes it's just like the opportunity and like the thing with the, so what I got published is like a little, really short story. It's like tiny. It's like less than 200 words or just about 200 words. And the actual story itself like came out of a writing exercise that I did like during a writing workshop that I attended. So there's opportunity everywhere if you just look for it and kind of go, yeah, hey, I could throw my hat to the ring. And I think the, uh, the trick is to just like not get discouraged because it's really easy to just get one rejection and go, oh, nobody likes me. I shall retreat to a cave in the woods for the rest of all time. It's okay to cry though after rejection. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's okay Feel your cry. feelings, but then pick yourself up, you know, brush your shoulders yeah. off and keep at it. Yeah. I may or may not cry after rejection. So let's sleep with it. I definitely <laughs> do. I have my little sad times. You know, I do a sad journal about it sometimes as one does. So have you gotten like the nice rejection where they actually make you feel really good and then say no? Cause that's a far Yes, but you know what is wild about that is that it's like, oh man, Eden Robinson was talking about this at the Writers Guild conference this year, which was online. So Eden Robinson wrote the Trickster series and uh, they turned it into a TV show as well on CBC. Yeah, anyway, wow. she's hilarious and amazing. Also would love to get her on our podcast. Um, but she was talking about the different like she basically she called rejection like a ladder and she was like there are maybe like five steps on the ladder and when you're at the bottom of the ladder it's just like a form rejection like it's just like an auto mm -hmm. email that they send out and they tell you like no we don't want this but thank you for thinking of us like please subscribe or whatever and then she was talking about how basically like as you get closer to the top of the ladder where acceptance lives like at the top you get more and more personalized rejections basically so yeah i've definitely gotten like the one <laughs> where it was like they said enough nice stuff that i was like really on the hook you know what i mean like i was like oh my god oh my god like my hopes were inflating and then right at the end they were like uh please like submit to us the next time we're open and i was like no but technically that's like a soft rejection it's an invitation to send more work well, they, which means that they like your stuff yeah no i i learned that lesson the hard way it's like oh my god if i had something else ready right now right right no it's like like I actually gave that advice to a friend of mine. She was like, "Well, I got rejected, you know, but they had, but they're like, we already have something at that's like this." You yeah, know, that's not that's not a no because you suck. No, that's it's just it yeah, shows yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, please, please show us something else. We want to take you. Yes, you can't take this. I'm yes, sorry. yeah, <laughs> and like that's a really good thing to remember too. And it's kind of like to your point earlier, Josh, about um, what you were saying about like our interviewers, our prospective interviews being less intimidating. Kind of the more we get people on the show, it's the same thing. I think when you're kind of like submitting your work for critique, because you kind of start to realize that the people who are actually getting your work, like they don't hate you and they're not like sitting around in a boardroom somewhere, chain smoking, drinking black coffee and like laughing at your pitiful attempts to make art. They also have a job to do, right? And sometimes they're rejecting based on arbitrary stuff that has nothing to do with the quality of your work, but is more like, oh, we already have like our quota for this or, you know what I mean? You know, you just gave me a great idea. Like the writing a revenge squad, there's actually actual <laughs> critics they go to a bar. They just fucking hate every like every every. They look for any excuse to reject something. It's like fucking newbies. And they're just, they they're just like chain smoking, cigarette like like they're they're actually taking manuscripts and putting them on a dartboard. All right, we read, and they just like chuck as hard as they can at, at it. They read it, they rip it to shreds. But the but then go. There's one writer who's getting on. It's like it's actually good enough. Another uh, they basically find out it's good enough. They just these guys are assholes. 
we're going to get revenge on these guys. And it's like maybe it turns like a writing hit squad because that would be a hilarious. <laughs> hilarious <laughs> Who like, are they thing. going after, though? Like mean editors? Mean, mean critics. Like the editors of Secret Society of Critics. Like, the, the, okay, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Of guys as editors. They seem like editors. <laughs> and the day, but at night, this asshole critics. Right? Just go like, <laughs> like, go like that. Right? And, oh my god! And, and their and their model is that then their logo would be Snoopy. Every time you got a rejection letter from the publisher, and then and peanuts, that would be like their like flag, their mantra. <laughs> their tears are like you know they're like yeah, that like I don't know like I I am the I you can tell I'm silly as fuck. I am just totally I like that a lot actually. I think I would like it more if like their main aim as a vigilante squad was like to break into critics' homes and then like critique them on stuff that they did not ask for their yeah, opinion yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that'd be great too. Like, yeah, yeah. No, actually, that actually just gave me the hook. One per because one person that's actually an editor that cares, it's always getting this flush pile of shit, right? It's like, <laughs> oh my, right? But they're working their way up and they get to this time and they make these really good things, and these really good things are constantly getting rejected and they don't know why. Yeah. So they actually decide, they actually get invited to the secret club. That they write it up, they put their name on in in a story. Like they like it's in their stories, they put their name on, they watch what goes on, it's like <gasps> the horror, and they left like this like <laughs> these right like great writers go at it, right? And 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 suddenly you have like this revenge squad of like these people that have had their dreams crushed go, teach you, we will teach you, <laughs> right? And, and 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 then you got it right that's how you i like it. this for a comic book i think it yeah. could work i think it yeah. could work yeah totally like like the absolute the writing revenge squad i killing critics one word at a time no. there you go. <laughs> oh yes okay i like it the yeah. death is metaphorical i like it's, it i like yeah. it yeah so i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask this then before we wrap up because unfortunately i i, I this is. I wish we could go longer, but we but we got it. We got important. We. I have a time limit. I have. I've been told I have to behave ish. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you have like a fifteen minute grace period, and then I'm gonna start to get twitchy. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna get twitchy. Then then you know she might like like again. I will see her in person at some point down the road again. I don't want her to throttle me. She's strong. <laughs> don't 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 let her like sweet think she's strong. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's true. She, she really is. But I I, I was like. You're writing. Yeah. Back to podcast. You got a little bit like you got published on a beer can. And I I mean I, I know that's a cool thing. But see, I'm looking at your bookshelf behind you and I'm I'm willing to bet, see what you really want is you want a book of yours beside all those books up there you really like. It's true. It's true. You know me too well. It's true. So 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 what you doing about it? Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm going to take some time off from working full time here, uh, which will be interesting because like I was saying, I can't remember if we were saying this on air or what, but we were talking about it before. So I've been working since I was a teenager. Um, so this will be like my first period of unbroken, uninterrupted time where I'm not working. And I have a couple of novel manuscripts that I am going to crack back into. I have I have like so many half finished projects that I just want to work on. I have one about a girl living in a small town that is um, like bound by the founder of the town's like blood deal. And so it grants like it grants the inhabitants, some of the inhabitants of the town, like special powers, but on the condition that they can't leave and she's desperate to get out. Um, I have like another manuscript that I was working on for a story about a um, woman who moves to a, remo a remote um, town up north and finds out there's like a murder, like a mystery situation and kind of like goes down that rabbit hole. Like there are just so many things I want to work on. So I just got to get the, I'm like the opposite of you, Josh, where I'm really bad at like spinning out like a complete plot or like a hook but i really get invested in like these characters that i draw up so like that's kind of the next steps for me is like writing out a complete um plot skeleton and then like taking it taking it to fruition can, can i can i can i throw another piece of advice at you of course i'm actually gonna ask this question you do not have to answer me out loud you okay. don't. It's not, that's not the question i'm gonna ask this question is if you were to close, if I were to ask you this, with all the stuff in your head, close your eyes and, I mm -hmm. ask, and just look at it, okay? Mm -hmm. What's the story you really want to tell right yeah. now? Yeah. 
what's the first one you see? And I only it, right? That's the yeah. end of the time. Yeah. Don't run from that one. Just don't. Go, <laughs> I, no, no, no I, I'm serious. Yeah. So we, we, we talked, we, we've skirted around this, this a, a lot. This is what I'm going to say. I'm assuming your goal, this is, I'm going to assume your goal, you still want to be traditionally published. So yeah. that's the date that you want it. You want to be traditionally published. You want to be, like I said, I can see it somewhere down the road, you and I battling total war. <laughs> and you will win. And I'll be like, who's <laughs> mine? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> What are these and then you'll have to write a sad journal about it, oh, but yeah, we'll still be proud. <laughs> but the way you get recognized for what you do, get, cut cut all the all the crap out. You know what you care about more than anything else in the world. What you love, what you, what what makes you laugh, cry, angry, whatever that is, whatever that story you feel so much that it burns inside you to tell it. Tell that story, and then let's share that to the world, somewhere someone and don't take no for an answer you're gonna get rejected who cares find that person that will actually that believes in you enough to say i'm gonna fucking go with it you find it you do it and then one then a couple of years two three years down the road i'm gonna we're gonna talk again and i might be oh god i hope i get this renee malosh yeah you Yay! did it yeah! <laughs> new york times bestseller oh I'm not, trying to play, I'm, not, I, 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 I'm not I'm not trying to put pressure on you. I no, I like it because it gives me something to work towards. I'm very good with hard deadlines. Yeah, 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 That's no, actually I, really I, funny. I, <laughs> no, I, I, I bring this up because paradox of success. We talked about like success a lot in the set. Mm -hmm. The paradox is you can do everything right and still not get that chance. Absolutely. So my challenge to you is you know what you need to do you know what's right for you to do everything you know if you must lose lose because it was don't lose because of you yeah lose because of the circumstances not because of you because if that because you will re, you will not regret like i gave it everything i had i knew there i did everything i knew how to do yeah and i didn't make it you know what you're gonna be like whatever Right, however long that takes you. But if you're like, well, if only I'd, that will eat you. Yeah, that oh, absolutely. More than anything else out yeah. there. So that's my challenge for you. That story, whatever, all these wonderful stories, I got a lot of stories in my head too. I got, right? I, I, I do, I do. You know, you know what I'm living with. You get yeah, it. Yeah, I do. So, so I decided to go, like, what stories do I care about right now? And those are the ones I'm writing about. Now, to the best of my ability, right now, every story I get better. Yeah. Hopefully, eventually. Now, me, I don't care if I hit the New York Times bestselling list. Yeah. I care about finding a readership. Yeah. So I mean, I can go indie. I can go traditional. Right. That's. But like, that's how it works too. That's how a lot of people build their careers, and I think people don't realize that. Yeah. Like, have you do have to start somewhere, right? Absolutely. No, yeah. I, absolutely. But, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean though, in your case, and, this is, and then we'll get to the plugging of stuff. Um, that doesn't mean in your case that you can't hit where you want right now. In fact, you should go for it. If that's what you really, really want, go for it. Just, just to see where you're at. Because I, you'll owe it to yourself just to find out. But yeah. give yourself the best sense. Tell the story that you care about the most. Tell it in the way that only you can tell it. And then find, and then, and then, probably the hardest part of the whole journey is finding the right person to believe in you, to champion you, to the places you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. One, two, three, and then just go and see what happens. And two years from now, when you come, I might be back sooner than that. But <laughs> two years from now, you'll come on the show, and you'll say, "I did it," and I'll be like, "Yes." And then we'll <laughs> We'll be running against each other in you know, like an award somewhere. And be like, <laughs> like You're going down. <laughs> and of course, at the end of the night. Oh, yeah, you have to like have your like your what's the word like gracious winner, your gracious yeah. loser face on. Yeah, yeah. Where you're like, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, yeah. I'm so proud of her. Why, why are you crying? <laughs> she stepped on me on her way to success. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
and I can't think of a better way to wrap this show up. Than just, <laughs> <laughs> Renee, before, before you plug, it was great to see you. Miss you. Yeah, same. I I will make it out to Windsor eventually. Like I said, Gio, my co-host for my podcast, lives down there, so I will I will make it out and we will connect. We'll have a beer at the very yeah. least. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds like a plan. But for people wanting to listen to you or read you, where can they go? So I have a podcast where I talk to other creatives uh, with my friend Gio. It is called Listen To Me Podcast, and you can check us out at... Uh, right now we're just on anchor. That's our like main feed anchor.fm slash listen to that's the number two me pod. Um, and we're also on Patreon at patreon.com slash listen to me pod. And my work is at renerot.com. So that's R E N E E W R O U G H T.com. And you can see some of my like original fiction. It's just like my writer, my writer website, like where I have stuff up there and pictures of me with shorter hair because I haven't updated it in a while. <laughs> I missed the green. Like I, I know. Yeah. I, I really got to get, uh, I really so got to get What's the love of mine? Should I just go like, like, like hot pink and just blind everybody? Yeah. yeah. I've done hot pink before. Um, I think it's harder to maintain than the green because the green kind of like sticks around. It just fades a little bit. The pink is harder, but if you want to go for it, follow your dreams, man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and with that, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Renee. Oh, God, I'm going to do this again. Malash. Renee Malash. Yes, Malash. This is Renee Malash. I had a pleasure when I met her when once collided a few years back. I'm glad that she's just doing well. And for everybody watching and listening, thanks for watching. I got another great guest tomorrow night. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. Oh, and one more thing. I'm trying to make Nita Lanning and Meredith Blogger my drawing slaves. We are having a little race on YouTube right now to get to 250 followers. I'm a halfway there at 125. The winner gets to make the losers do it. I want to do penguin zombie apocalypse stuff. So if you <laughs> haven't followed my channel yet, Joshua Pentelaresco, like and subscribe. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast. Stay inspired, keep shining in the dark, and keep making beautiful things. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. One. Ah, long button. <laughs> We're still watching the stream because I hit the wrong button. There we go.